A beautiful day to you all there. Welcome to another beautiful, wonderful, glorious day. This is a very cold morning here in Franjuk this morning, Western Cape, uh, South Africa. Wherever you are joining me from this morning, I want to welcome you to this beautiful live broadcast. I believe this morning once again that the Spirit of the Lord will give us greater push, greater inroad into the prophetic intention of the Father for this glorious day. It has been such an outpour of the Spirit of God in terms of the revelation of God's intention for our life, particularly in building the church. And we want to thank God for how the Spirit of the Lord <clears throat> has led us even yesterday. I, I want to believe that yesterday we had such a time of, of grace, you know, release in the unveiling in the in the in the understanding of the heart of god as we look into the concept of you know trans transiting from traditions of men into the new society amen into the new kingdom community that the lord was establishing and i think that is something that we need to really give thanks to god for particularly as we seek to understand the nature of how to push further, how to move further in the reality of God's counsel for, amen, this uh, end time. Uh, uh, there's a church we know that is emerging, a church that heaven has ordained to carry out, amen, his intention, a church God has ordained to bring forth his counsel for our day, for our time. And we are you know, it will be wisdom for us to find, amen, the right spiritual, if you will, the architecture of this house, of this church, of this ecclesia. So we don't continue, amen, in the same uh, uh, um, quagmire of, you know, the, 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 the past, you know, generation and of course the past decade. We want to begin to accelerate. We want to push further. We want to move further. Amen. We want that which heaven has committed and is committing into our hands in this season in time to be effective, to be strategic. Hallelujah. We want to have momentum. We want to be able to push further the intentions of God, if you will, to the finish. <clears throat> so uh, this morning, once again, I will see, you know, to us finishing on this concept that we we're looking at yesterday i believe that what we established yesterday is another milestone amen to god's voice to god's desire for you know for our lives and i want to really appreciate those who are following us who are joining us uh, if you are out there and you are connecting with what the lord is doing in our space amen in this time around uh, i want to thank god for your life i want to continue to pray that the lord will continue to release grace and resource into my own spirit so that you know we can continue to do what we need to do in terms of allowing and helping others to see what god amen is is proclaiming and declaring for this season in time indeed the lord is speaking and anyone who have the ears to hear will surely hear that god hallelujah is speaking and is speaking loud and clear all right unfortunately god can be speaking to us but if we are not fine-tuned if our ears are not adjusted if our hearts are not aligned if we're not circumcised by her what we'll be hearing is just another sound just another you know noise and this is not a place for noise this is not the place amen to you know to make you know all kinds of you know sounds without clarity without direction without you know objective the bible says if the if the sound makes amen if the if the if the trumpet hallelujah hallelujah is not well blown amen if if the trumpet is not sounding <clears throat> In accordance to the tune that will cause men, amen, to you know to, to discern, to know. The Bible says, Who will prepare? Hallelujah. Who will prepare for war? So my my, my assignment, my calling, my you know, a, a mandate, particularly in this next uh, 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 season that God has given to us as a window of opportunity, amen. Is you know, in fact, I was thinking about something this morning, but before I go into that, let me finish this thought. I believe that we need to, we have to, hallelujah, continue to sound this, this alarm of the spirit. We need to continue to ring this bell, amen, of, of a wake-up call. Yes, for too long the church, amen, has been sleeping. 
All right? And there's so many activity around what we call church. There's so many activity. I mean, this is Sunday morning. While many are going to be going to church, will be edified, empowered. Amen. But a lot will just be going for entertainment. A lot will be going just for, you know, another, you know, session of somebody steering them up. All right, you know, you know, jump for joy, and after all of that, you you, you still end up, amen, not changing. You still end up in the same spot, amen. We've done all of that. Well, I ne I never did that, but but you know, growing up, you know, as a as a as you know, as a spiritual lead, as a pastor, you know, you want to excite the people, and there's nothing wrong in excitement if the excitement is about, amen, the intentions of God, the counsels of God. If the excitement is about leading us to the place where, amen, you know, when, 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 when we have joy because the Lord has spoken to us and we're willing to go forth, not counting the cost, amen, willing to go forth, then that is a good thing. But not just getting excite, excitement, amen, where you know that you don't even have a sense of direction. That's not, that's, that's crazy. You know, we have, we've left that behind. Friends, these are the twilight. Thank you, my dear sister, for joining this morning. We are the twilight, amen, of a new day. A new day has dawned upon the sons of men. Amen. A new voice, hallelujah, is, is ushering people to, hallelujah, the point, the place of God's next divine intention. Have you seen how men, leaders, you know, across the world are collapsing, failing? Have you seen how, you know, things are happening in such a speed that it's almost difficult to catch up? I mean, I, sometimes, I don't know, maybe you, you, you're picking this up. When you look at what is going on right now, America, you know, is a case study. America is a case study. So many, so many nations are, are finding their own problem, but America is a case study. And I'm talking about the leadership of America. You understand? When you begin to see things happening on that level, you know God is speaking. There's a handwriting clear on the wall. So it's going to take a prophet. It's going to take one who is tracking with God to give you clear interpretation that when you see this, they say when you see when you when you see Jerusalem being invaded, hallelujah. When you see Jerusalem being invaded, they say, You that you are on the rooftop, don't come down, amen. To pick your things. You that are on the mountain, don't come down, amen. Make sure that your flight, amen, is not is not is not in the is not in the winter. You know, this scripture, this is scripture. So we, when we look at events around us, amen, there are signs to speak to us about the, the nature of the days that we live in. When you look at, amen, the, the, uh, you know, the whole president of America, you know, Joe Biden says, you know, you know, make statements that you, I mean, I, you know, any person out there will make such statement, they will, I mean, that person will be, you know, will be given and hiding. I mean, over, 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 you know, three trillion has been wasted, amen, and, you know, over a nation, and in just one few, you know, days of, of taking the people out of the land of Afghanistan, you see such a mistake, such, such, a, such a colossal mistake, and you ask yourself, how did you get to this point, to this place? How? No, but, but those are the signs, amen, of the declining of a nation. In, in days like this, in seasons like this, we have to adjust, amen. When you look at what is going on in South Africa, amen, we, we, with, with the ANC and the factions and the fighting, I mean, these people no longer have regard for life, for the people that they are called or, uh, to, to lead. When you look at all of the things that is happening, when you look at the shared level of corruption, the PPEs and all of this, a woman killed in Johannesburg just because Amen. She was going to, you know, spill the beans. She was, she was going to be a whistleblower. They killed her. They killed her. They killed her. Literally killed her. We're talking about things happening in government that you will ask yourself, what's going on here? Yes. When you look at all the things going on in Nigeria, all right, and the the, pre the president, you know, basically, you know, holding on to one one part of the, you know, of of of, of the of the country, you know. Pushing one at particular agenda, you understand? Not leading the nation again. You can't lead a nation when you're only focusing on one aspect, when you're only focusing on your own people. You understand? When you look at all of these things, these are issues that you 
cause the church to readjust. Amen. How it, it, it functions and represents the intentions of God. Never say, amen, those are things happening in the government. Whatever happens, amen, in, in, in government, you know, it, it speaks to what God is doing. All right. The days of blindness, the days where men are groping in noonday, you know, the days where men are collapsing are upon us, the days where leadership are failing are upon us, the days where people don't know what to do again about life, amen, is upon us. So it tells us that we have gotten, amen, to a peak earlier that requires a different voice, a different direction, a different mandate, amen, of leadership. A new order of people must emerge out of the quagmire. Those that we look up to, that we expect, that, that have the power, that have the knowledge, that have the wisdom, that have the resource, are failed. They are failed. They are failing. This is not just about the nation of America. This is about a case study. It, this is a prophetic sign. It's an handwriting on the wall. Hallelujah. And when you, when you take things from that level and you begin to lower it down, amen, to your own immediate life. All right? You, you ask yourself, you know, one of our sisters, I must say this. I, I, this morning I woke up, I just saw, you know, an SM, uh, you know, a, 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 a message. He said, she said, uh, uh, Elder, I need you to help me to identify my blind spot because I've been going, I've been doing some, you know, self retrospects. <laughs> And I mean, I got a shock of my life because I think in my entire life of ministry, I think if I'm not mistaken, maybe one or two people have ever said that to me that, please, could you help me to find my blind spot? I said, whoa, this is, I mean, just <laughs> early in the morning, waking up, you see that that tells you that people are tracking things in the spirit. When somebody says to you, please help me find my blind spot. Wow. That, 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 that takes you to another level. That is like, you know, God help me here. What do you begin to say? That is somebody that wants to go somewhere. And those are the kind of people, leadership that we are looking for in the days that we, that we are in. That somebody can say, please help me find. Can you highlight? Can you send me the things you have picked about my life? The blind spot. When you do that, when you begin to enter into that realm, it means, amen, that you have, you, you have, you have stripped yourself. Hallelujah. You want to enter into the day of God. You want to enter into that reality where, amen, all you want, amen, is what God wants for you. Nothing else. Because you, you, you have damned the consequence of whatever th this person is going to say. You understand? Because you want to see a better you. You want to see a better a better life. You want to come into a better reality. Amen. Of who you are. And I tell you, it's going to take people. Like I was saying yesterday. It's going to take people. Amen. I'm not even sure if she listened to my message yesterday. You understand? But it's going to take a people. Amen. To tell you your blind spot. Because there are things that we have, we have built up. Traditions that have become strong goals. Remember my definition yesterday of tradition? They have become major strongholds in our life that we don't even know that those things are there. And they are the very thing hindering us from moving. It's like every time you want to go forward, you, you hit this stone wall <laughs> and you're still wondering. You can't see it because you don't want to see it. You don't even want to recognize that. that I mean, it's like, it's like Balaam. Thank you, Lord Jesus. It's like Balaam. You know, Balaam, after the Lord had told him, you know, don't, don't align with Balak. Don't, don't go. <laughs> but this guy had been captured, amen, by the spirit of Mammon. He had been captured, amen, by, you know, by, by corruption. He's a prophet of God, but this man, amen, has been captured. He still made up his mind was going to go. After the Lord had done everything, <laughs> Because this guy was going to go use his gift. Balak, see, how shat talaba yan talaba. Balak does not mind that you have a gift. If he can corrupt it, if he can pervert it, it will use any, it will use anything. Hallelujah. It will use your need, it will use your challenge, it will use your present circumstance. That's why one of the greatest blind spots, amen, one of the greatest blind spots is that we allow our immediate need, amen, to define our future. We allow our immediate need, amen, to define. You see, we sell. We sell our future based on our present need. Maybe that's one of the things I need to tell my dear sister. <laughs> we allow, amen, what we're going through. I mean, that's almost a blind spot for every, almost everybody. You allow what you're going through now. 
to, to make you make decisions that will impact your children's children, that will impact your future. When I look at, you know, what's going on in America with the president, amen, that's a major blind spot. No, America should not have been in Afghanistan. We have dealt with, we have, we have conquered, we have conquered, you know, uh, 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 ISIS. We have conquered, you know, uh, these terrorists. It's the same people they claim they have conquered were the same people that bombed, hallelujah, that bombed the airport. The same people that bombed the airport. The same people they claim they have conquered. The same, the same terrorist guys. It's not even the Taliban. <laughs> but the issue is, why are you highlighting this? I'm highlighting this because I want, you to, I want you to see this as a case study. Because America has got all the intelligence. They've got all the firepower. They've got all the manpower. They've got all the wisdom. They've got all the you know, understanding. Amen. Everything that you can, that you can summon amen, as a resource, amen, as, a, as, a, as an agent, as a system in the earth. There is no nation. There's no nation that can stand that nation. But God is showing us something. The declining. When a nation begins to turn away from God, when you begin, the Bible says the, 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 the Bible says the fear of God is the beginning of knowledge. That's one of the one of the materials that I'm, you know, one of the scriptures that I'm using in tracking the material that I'm going to be releasing very soon. The fear of God is the beginning of knowledge. Then another one says in the same book of Proverbs, it says, Amen. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge. So, so <laughs> Solomon is not crazy. When he first said the fear of God, Amen. If you read uh, 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 um, Proverbs 1, I guess, verse from verse 7. He said, the fear of God is the beginning of when a nation, amen, no matter how powerful, no matter how invincible that nation is, no matter how secure, I mean, come on, <laughs> when you look about empires, when you look at the great empires of the past, all right, all of them collapse because they dear God, because, amen, they refuse, they reject, hallelujah, the position and the place of God in their life. Who is that God, Pharaoh said? <laughs> Because Pharaoh, imagine, imagine Pharaohs in Egypt, Pharaohs are known to be God. In fact, Pharaohs play the position of God. That's why when God sent Moses amen, you know, to, to, to Egypt, go tell that guy, let my people go that they may worship me. Look at what Pharaoh said. He said, who is that God? Don't you know that I am God? The fact that God folds his hand and watch and let you do your own thing. And let you think that you're powerful. There's none like you. <laughs> Doesn't mean that God is too weak. He's, 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 you know, he's, he's disconnected from what's going on in life. No, God is very aware. And when things, amen, get to their boiling point, before you change, you will be judged. I was having a bath yesterday while I was just lying in the bath. The Lord said to me, these are the handwritings of my judgment. You see, we, we will still think, oh, judgment is in the future. Many nations, many leaders, many churches are, are already in the state of being judged. But they can't see it because nobody is giving them the interpretation that what happened to you is a judgment of God. Sometimes the judgment of God amen, may not kill you. I was thinking about that even this morning. How many of us have been saved through this corona? I mean, we have been saved, we have been free, we've been delivered. Amen. Many, many of our friends, many of you know, our loved ones have died. Many are still dying around us. Many are in critical condition. But somehow, God has kept us. Don't you think that amounts to something? In the midst of God's mercy over your life, then you still be running around, be doing your own thing. You cannot afford to do your own thing. In this day, there's a reason why God spared your life. You're not better, better of those people who died. I'm not better of those people who died. Amen. I was reading about a pastor yesterday in America, all right, who died. His, 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 his people, the church, were praying for him. They fasted. I mean, for this man not to die because they loved their pastor, but he died. Now, how do you begin to explain that? What are you going to tell the people? Are you going to go say, are you going to say God is unfaithful? No. These things amen, are, are getting more complex. Because your theology is not going to be able to, amen, you know, excuse you out of this. And that's why I will continue to tell people, it's not enough to say, well, uh, uh, these people, there's conspiracy behind, you know, the vaccine. I tell you, the vaccine is going to save a lot of people. Because not everybody has got faith like Isaiah. And the fact that Isaiah got faith does not mean that I cannot take the vaccine. Are you getting the point that I'm making? Keep your faith to yourself. 
and encourage people, amen, in the way that wisdom, hallelujah, is speaking, hallelujah. There are many, many people in our churches that have died. There are many that are still going to die because somebody, amen, is saying the wrong thing. Somebody is saying the right thing, amen, but with the wrong agenda. Somebody does not know how, amen, to speak wisdom has not taught them. I was listening to David this morning. Hey, friends, the crown is weight, is weighty. The crown, the crown is weighty. The crown is. I envy those who want to be leaders. <laughs> when you study the scripture and you look at the kind of things that a, a decisions that a leader must make. Look at it is when pride, when pride becomes what drives the decision of a leader, that leader cannot but to mess up things. And that's what we're seeing. So one of the things that you've got to, t I've got to tell, I've got people following me from America. So it is not like this man, he doesn't like Americans. No, I love America. I love, the, I love that nation. I love the people. But the system is corrupt. The system that drives that nation has to be changed. And only the church has the voice, has the power, has the wisdom, has the understanding, amen, to engage that system. Because it's a spiritual thing. It's a spirit is a spirit is a spirit and that's why you have noticed that god had to raise somebody like you know like like you know like like uh, uh, um, you know paul i wanted to say something earlier skip my thought now but we have to we have to wake up we have to understand we have to we have to begin to see the blind spot around our life we have to be able to you know believe god to help us to lead us to people that can say, please show me my blind spot. Because, you know, tradition is a major blind spot. And I'm going to be showing you this morning. It's a major blind spot that almost crippled the church, amen, from entering a day. From stepping into a new day. From, from taking the baton, amen, of God's intention for her. The, the, the church was almost being crippled until... Somebody like Barnabas <laughs> was awakened. And that's, that's, that's God for you. In every, have you noticed that as we, as we have continued to look into the book of Acts, there's always one man that God brings out at every crucial season, at every you know, uh, 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 um, critical moment of the church. God will always bring somebody. One man always saved the day. One person, one person. You see, thank God for the community. Thank God for the multitude. Thank God for every. But there is always one amen who has been who has been who, who has been prepared who has a better insight who has a better understanding in the day where everybody in the church including the leaders we are refusing to accept to welcome to give a right hand of fellowship amen to this man that god himself has introduced to the body barnabas took him because Barnabas was tracking in the spirit i told you yesterday these are days where we need the Barnabas kind of ministry you see they are not always known. They are not always at the limelight. The Barnabas are not always at. But when they need to make a decision, they make it. They know. Hallelujah. They, they, they are always there. They are always there. They know when to, how to. Hallelujah. This is a very important in my position. You see, friends, we are on a transition, right? God gave us, you know, a decade to transit. And a lot of things are going to happen within this trans transition. Not everybody's going to make it, I'm sorry to say, unfortunately. Not everybody's going to make it to the other side. Not everybody will be, will, be, will, be, will be awakened, will be resurrected into the new position of operation. Have you seen how people are dying? Many of the people dying are leaders, men of God. Are, are people that we, we respect, we honor. So the, 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 the point is... We have to know how to align our life, ourselves, amen. We have to know how to walk this path, amen. We have to know how to redeem the time for the days are evil. We have to know how to adjust, amen. We have to know how to travel light. We have to know how to undress ourselves, amen. And allow the Lord himself to return in clothing us. Don't clothe yourself. Undress yourself. It's, it's called locating your blind spot. Undress yourself. Undress your mind. Hallelujah. 
Lord, strip me of everything that I know that I that I that I thought, Amen. I I, I have I have I you know there are mistakes we make in our life. <clears throat> success can be a tricky thing. So is failure. To me, success and failure does the same work. <laughs> Success and failure, they, they do the same work. If you're tracking by the spirit, you'll know what I'm talking about. Success can make you, you know, feel invincible. Oh, to the point that you, you think you don't need God again. You think you know better. You think that, that's what is going on in America. With the leadership. A leadership that thinks that, all right, they can still talk down every other person. They can still look down. They can still do and undo. They don't know that the times have changed. The seasons have changed. A day where one person can wake up and begin to, you know, unilaterally make decisions is over. <laughs> Those terrorist guys were among the people in at the airport while they were trying to quickly evacuate the people out of Afghanistan. Those terrorist guys were there. Where they were there. They targeted those Americans. They, they targeted their own and they targeted the Americans. You see, we've got to believe God in the days that we're living. That we must increase our discerning capacity. So that, amen, when you are trying to do good works and you're trying to assist you, you're trying to do what you need to do, you also have the sight to scan through. You are able to see with the eyes of an eagle. You are able to see things. You understand the seasons, amen, that you are not deceived. You're not deceived. You're not carried away. You're not charmed. You can have the best, you know, arsenal. You can have the best weaponry. But if you're foolish, amen, and you're going to, you're going to slumber. You see, your enemy don't sleep. Your enemy is always, amen, a step ahead. That's why you have to track with God. Not by might, not by power. You can have all the, all, the, all the resources in this world. And you can be foolish in the operations of, of, the, of, the, of the things of life. Are you seeing something here? I told you. You've got to see this, amen, as a case study. Just like we're looking at, amen, the book of Acts as a case study. To adjust our life. That's why we're studying the book of Acts. We look because, listen to this. Humans are the same. The things, amen, that, you know, Noah, you know, faced. The challenge that he faced. The, the, the kind of people he faced. The kind of, you know, a, a wisdom, grace God gave to him. Back in the day is the same thing God is doing today. There is no, there is no new thing under the earth. Technology is not new. Don't let nobody fool you. There is no new thing under the earth, the preacher said. There's nothing new under the earth. I was telling you earlier, a success can make you, earlier, you know, fail. So does poverty, amen, can make you fail. You see, failure, amen. Failure is different from poverty. Poverty is not having opportunity. Failure is misusing the opportunity. Failure is not seen. Failure is not understanding. Failure is not working with the spirit of God. Failure is not tracking what the Lord is showing you. He is revealing. He's telling you. That's failure. Poverty and failure are two different things. You can be poor, I lay, and still be successful. Because poverty is relative. Didn't the Bible say, bless are the poor in spirit? <laughs> Blessed are the poor in spirit, for they shall inherit the earth. See, I told you, our, our concept of thinking and interpreting the, the word of God and the things of God. In this day, listen, I will not count myself as a, you know, as, you know, as, as a successful person, but I'm not a failure. You know what I mean? You know what I mean when I mean successful? In, in terms of when you come around my house... You're not going to see all the things that people expect. People, in fact, you're not going to see most of the things people see in the house of men of God. I am as ordinary as any ordinary person. Hey, but I carry something that is resourcing lives and nations. Yes. And I like it so. I'm very aware. I'm acutely aware of my position. Even if 
God add those things to me tomorrow, I will still live my life ordinary. I will still wear my, you know, my... <laughs> I will still wear my, my sandal. I got a sandal not too long ago. <laughs> and you know the name my, my son called the sandal. He said, this is Jesus' sandal. He called it Jesus' sandal. Because it's very bare. But it's durable. But it's, it doesn't look beautiful. It, it, it doesn't have all the, all, you know, all the attraction. You know? you know the kind of shoe you wear? You, you, you force people to look at you. <laughs> I don't like things like that. I don't like things that, that compels people to look at me again. No. I don't like, I, I don't like, I don't, I, I don't like the stage. I like to be me. And if you're not comfortable with me, then you can keep your space. Because I don't have to do anything physically to try to impress you that's not who I am. Some people do that, but that's not who I am. Are you getting my point, friends? But there's something that I carry. I carry the wisdom of the Holy One. I'm tracking the knowledge of the ancients of days. I want to walk in the path that Enoch walked. I want to put my feet upon this very foot. Hallelujah. Of Noah. I want to be able to journey in the way, hallelujah, of Abigail, of Ruth, of Deborah. I want to see the things that the Holy One saw. Because the more you walk with God, the more you realize that material things are but instruments to advance the purposes of the kingdom. And if those material things become what you focus on, they become your God. Including the things we claim we use for ministry. In the days of this man that we are talking about. You may say well they, but they don't have all the kind of technology that we have today. But yet they did greater work. Amen. They didn't have amen, a platform of YouTube and all of these you know, microphones. And Jesus never used a microphone. But the people heard him. With, with all the latest gadgets we have, we're still struggling, hallelujah, to handle 5,000, 10,000 people. If the microphone and the, and the sound system is not proper in, the, in, you know, in, in our auditorium, we go crazy. <laughs> but Jesus spoke to people, amen, thousands of people. The disciples, the apostles, they spoke to thousands of people. Why? Because those people, they employed the ministry of the Spirit, Amen. They, 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 they did not depend. They, de they depend less. In fact, at a point, Jesus, who will minister, he had to go borrow a boat. Who borrows a space to preach in this days? No. We have to buy our own. We have to build our own. We have to... Ex Come on. The priority is wrong. Even if those things are needed, but the priority is wrong. When you have not sought the presence of God, you are not full of the spirit. When you gather the people, what are you going to give to the people? When you don't understand why God must bless you, why God needs to bless you, when God blesses you, what are you going to do? You make, you goof, you make a mistake, you make a mess of the resource. Trillions wasted. In Afghanistan and the president of America said their mission in Afghanistan is not nation building. I almost collapsed when I heard that. Not even the law of warfare, of warfare hallelujah, agrees to that. When you destroy a nation one of the law of military, of, of warfare, amen, demands that you do everything to rebuild the nation. That's a principle in the scripture, but it's also an international law. I said, what? Like I said, it is the day of the expression of the foolishness of men we used to honor, we used to believe. There's a scripture in Isaiah that spoke about that. That spoke into things like this. What am I saying? God is helping us to understand the reality of the day that we live in. 
And all that, all that I've been saying the past few minutes, you must align them to your own personal life, to how you understand church ministry. To I hope you understand that church ministry, amen, is not just about a place that we go to gather, you know, that we convey, hallelujah. Yes, that, that, that is one percent. Church ministry is about you because it's what you bring into the community, hallelujah, that resources the community to go out and become more proficient, more effective, more productive. Are you hearing this, friends? We must understand this is not a day to play around, to joke around. This is not the day I lay to be playing hide and seek. Those days are over. The days of games are over, friends. We have reached a plateau. We have reached a crescendo. Is either a new order of leadership emerges that will take, off, take us from where we are to the next height in the spirit. Or you know what happens? The law of diminishing return kicks in. We begin to come down. You get up there. You don't know how to recast the vision and press further. I read a scripture this morning that just got me <laughs> excited. But I'm not going to share it today. <laughs> oh, David is a man. If you don't know how to recast the vision and move further. Have you noticed that people in life generally, when they reach that height of success... And they don't know how to how to how to re-engineer, how to how to rebuild, how to redefine themselves, amen. How to recalibrate their vision, their sight. They begin to come down. It happens to athletes. It happens to successful people. The only difference with wealthy people, amen, is that they invest their money. And sometimes, if you are not careful, you don't know the right company to invest in, and you go and invest. One crazy, you know, law comes because there's a crazy, you know, uh, leaders, you know, on somewhere. It makes a law and all your profits goes down the drain in one day. And that's why people get heart attack. They say, oh my God, the stock exchange has collapsed. Yes. <laughs> Are you getting the point that I'm making? We have to know where amen, our treasure is. They say where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be. Where the treasure of a man is. Your treasure is not money. Your treasure cannot be money. In the days that we live in. Look at the money America has wasted. And, you know, and their counterparts. The Europe, they say over. How many trillions? Trillions not billions. Donald Trump was speaking. I was listening to one of his, his uh, interview a few days ago. He said they spent close to. 42 billion in Afghanistan in a month just to sustain. That's, and that's one of the reasons why they said you've got to pull out. Yes, you've got to pull out. You, you must pull out. But how you pull out, how you leave the place cannot be hallelujah, worse than how you made the place. Come on. It's called Leadership 101. The end is always better than the beginning. Thank you, my dear, uh, brother Jonathan, this morning. Nice to have you join this morning. The treasure cannot be money. Cannot be money. No, it cannot be. There's a treasure of God in us. And if we're not focused on that treasure, on that reality, guess what? We will be distracted. The Bible says, amen, because of the joy that was set before him. This is the day where we have to reclaim. Amen. We have to wash. We have to, we have to go back to the washing of our sight. So we can begin to uh, uh, have a clearer vision of the joy that is before us. Or else all the things happening around us will make us drop the ball. Will make us give up. We will give up. <laughs> we will give up. 
When you see nations failing, leaders failing, everything around you failing, people that are in health sector failing, people that are in, in the world of you know, you know, commerce failing, when you see politicians failing, what are you, you're going to say to yourself, there's no more hope. <laughs> there is hope because our hope is not in those people. Our hope is not in the system of this world. We are sent, amen, to fix the system. So if you don't have that understanding, that philosophy, amen, guess what? You will be, you'll be disappointed. Say, look at what Sri Ramaphosa did. <laughs> look at what Zuma did. Hello? You, you, the, Zuma is not the benchmark. Sri Ramaphosa is not the benchmark. Hallelujah. The church is the benchmark. And until we have people, amen, like Daniel, like Joseph, hallelujah, like, like Deborah, hallelujah, like Esther, amen, who understand how to use influence to transform places, amen, to engage, amen, powers to engage, amen, corridors of power, we will remain it. Because you see, our problem is we have def defined and limited the church to the four walls of where we gather. Where we gather is important, but that is just a place where we get to be resource, amen, where we get to be empowered, where we get earlier to be given the next marching order so that when we go out, Jesus gave us that principle, amen. He says, he says, I am the good shepherd. <laughs> and the good shepherds know how to open the door, amen, for the sheep to go out, amen, and to come in, to go out and to come in, to go out and to come in. A problem is when people come in, we shut the door. <laughs> We remove the we remove the gate, we put wall there, we, we remove the window, we, we put we, we seal it up. We are afraid to engage the world. Jesus, amen, saved the people from the world, but he sent them back to the world. We're dealing with something this morning that we began to look at yesterday. Because you see, the, the moment we move from Acts chapter 9, chapter 10, <laughs> the concept, amen, of the book of Acts of the Apostle changes. It changes. And you're going to see. The moment we move away from chapter 9, chapter 10, in fact, from chapter 10, amen, we have entered into a new day. Chapter 10 is the new door, hallelujah, of accessing the outermost part. Because you will see that from chapter 10, amen, uh, uh, you will, the man that God gave a commission, amen, to reach but the but the, the 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 Jews and the Gentiles, and of course, it's the same mission that God actually gave Peter. But you know, uh, Paul that was given that mandate, Amen. He was still in the making. It's like God had to pause and say, "Okay, now let's introduce a veteran." Mo, uh, Peter is a veteran, Amen. It was a, it was the first man God said upon this rock, Amen. I will build my church. Mm -hmm. It was there when the Lord gave the word, I live. Yes, from Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost part. So now God was amen, introducing Peter to the ministry of the uttermost part because amen, the, the, the Ethiopian, uh, excuse me, the 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 the, 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 the Roman centurion, amen, amen. Listen to me. It's not a Jew. It's not a. It's not. A, it's not. It's not from Judea. Neither is he a Samari a Samaritan. Hallelujah. It's from the uttermost part. So the dynamics of interacting with such a man, the dynamics of interacting with such a ministry, Amen, needs to be what acquired. Peter had not acquired that understanding. He said, but he had been baptized. Yes, the fact that he, he was baptized does not mean that he had learned to use, Amen, the the impact, the grace, and the giftings. You see, a lot of people are carrying raw anointing that have not been trained that have not been you see i thank god for many of the people that are following me who are who are in the marketplace you see because i help them to fine tune i help them hallelujah to refine i help them to shape the arrowhead amen of their ministry that's what we're supposed to be doing i'm not supposed to be giving them you know that's yet the lord all the time no 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 that we do every day, amen, in the preaching. As I'm preaching right now, you are hearing that said the Lord. But one-on-one, -on -one, amen, shows you how to direct the anointing. The anointing must be, amen, a sign, must be channel. Earlier, must, you see, the anointing is like an arrow. You, you have to put that thing in the fire. You have to ship it, amen. You have to send it. You, you, know, you know, it's like, it's like, a, it's like a missile, amen, that you, that you send. You have to program it. If you don't do that, amen, you'll be carrying an anointing and somebody's going to finish you. Because you have not been trained. 
because you have not been empowered, you have not been equipped. They say when you hear the voice, a guy was hearing the voice. He had the, he had the ears to hear, but he was, he was responding wrongly to what he heard. <laughs> he could hear, amen. He could hear, but he was responding wrongly to what he heard. You see, so you see, what you, what, how to respond to what you hear, that does not come by anointing. That comes via, amen, training, teaching, hallelujah, coaching, hallelujah, impartation, direction. It comes via, amen, the, the, the concept, amen, of guiding you, building you, amen, and, and you know, and, and, and bringing you to the point where sometimes you say, hey, but, hey, elder, that's, that's, hey, that's, that one is painful. Yes, yeah, so it's part of, amen, the making of where, hallelujah, God is sending you. So that when you hear that voice again, this is what Eli said. Yes, Eli has been judged, but he has experience. When you hear that voice again, this is how you must engage. This is how you must interact. When you hear that voice again, the problem, I know you can hear the voice of God. But do you know what to do? I know you see vision. <laughs> I know you can dream. But do you know the interpretation? Hallelujah. A man journeyed all the way amen, from Ethiopia. Came all the way to Jerusalem to worship God. Amen. He was reading. He was not an illiterate man. He was reading. But he, he was clueless of what he was reading. Until the Lord sent Philip. He said, go join the chariots. The chariot, earlier, joining the chariot is not about laying hand on him. It's not about him staring him, getting, no, no, no. It's about bringing clarity, bringing precision, giving him understanding. Understanding is profitable. Wisdom is profitable to direct. The anointing must be channeled, must be directed. We all have anointing. Even though they're in measure. But we all need, amen, to be rightly channeled. You see, Peter was anointed. He had been anointed, amen, to be, to be one of the leaders. I didn't say the leader. One of the leaders of the church. Because after everybody, Acts 15, after everybody has spoken, Peter did not stand up. James stood up. <laughs> it was James who stood up and gave the final verdict. It was not Peter. Peter has his place. It was the anointing, amen, of pioneering. The Peter's anointing, amen, was the anointing to pioneer on this revelation, on this rock. But Peter was not, amen, the definer of the church. Peter has his own dimension in the church. But James <laughs> is the eldest of them all. He's the eldest of them all. James, go tell them that I said it's not Peter. It was James. The Bible says, amen, James stood up, hallelujah, and gave the final, after James spoke, nobody spoke again. <laughs> Lord Jesus, I'm excited all by myself. We're not there yet, but we're going somewhere. It is important that we track this thing. It is important that we track what we're talking about because the Lord is speaking to us and if we don't know how to track the anointing and how to connect the anointing to, to elders, to people, amen, who can fine tune, you see, you see, the anointing, the mantle, I, I've shared on this, the mantle had already fallen, amen, on Elijah. 22 years, he was an anointed, hallelujah, man of God, Elisha. Remember, Elijah was about to be off the scene. Yes, he got tired because of the war. <laughs> Jezebel almost killed, <laughs> almost killed the prophet. The man was tired of fighting battle all his life. He ran. God said, okay, if you're tired, I need you to do something. Anoint Jehu and anoint Elisha. Two dimensions of grace we need if we're going to take the systems of the world. Jehu, amen, would deal with the political, you know, sphere. Would deal with the, would deal with issues on ground. Jehu is boot on ground. <laughs> Warfare 101. Jehu is boot on ground. He doesn't still, you know, no, no. He goes like a crazy man. There's something pushing him. But that going forth, amen, is being steered by an anointing. You see, the church is, we only know one part of the anointing. 
Can I give another word? Yes. Moses was on the mountain. Moses was on the mountain. His hand lifted praying. His prayer. Shakapapo. Shandadabo. Aaron and all the priests of God. They lifted his hand. Hallelujah. They are warring. Amen. The principality that are, that are steering the war going on. Don't you understand that when we have. Oh Jesus. When we have war. All this war we have in Africa. We have in all this part of the world. The, the war that is stopping us from seeing. Amen. The resource that God has given to us. From, from utilizing the minerals God has given he said there are demons who steers war in the spirit amen and they baptize certain places certain men you know and we off we start fighting ourselves we start fighting ourselves while we are fighting amen? the same demonic spirit will speak to somebody in europe amen to come you know at, at our backyard and start packing things and start packing your minerals you know while you are fighting you're fighting each other hey <laughs> hey god help me god help me here you see these guys, they understood that for them to be able to win, amen, the land war, for them to be able to win the war over the minerals, over the resource on the ground, for them to be able to win the war, hallelujah, of land, uh, uh, ex, uh, what do they call it now, expropriation, yes, for them to be able to win the war, hallelujah, over the waters, for them to be able to win the war, amen, over the land farm, all, all this war that we are fighting, the war, amen, over the finance, over education, for them to be able to win the war, amen, in politics, in, in, the, in, the, in the parliament, all of that, all those political things, there is a power that a principality that are spirit in the realm of the spirit, amen, fueling and empowering their agents. So the strategy was Moses, take your place. You see, elders must know where to, to, to you know to take their place. You see, me, <laughs> I'm not sent into the marketplace, I'm not a marketplace person. But don't make a mistake, I can train and equip people sent to the marketplace. That's why I don't bother myself with the marketplace ministry because that is not my calling. But I resource. I've got materials that we have used, we've been using to resource people, yes, in the marketplace. Because to win in the marketplace, it's not just about Turenti. Turenti in my, my place means English. It's not just about, you know, how to land, hallelujah, you know, your product. No, it's not about your landing, you know, uh, uh, capacity or capability. That's good, amen. But you need a spirit that will back it up. You need a spirit, hallelujah, that will back, you need a spirit that when that man is looking at your... Uh, you know, uh, you know, at your proposal, you know, yes, the spirit of God is walking behind it. You better don't reject this proposal, hallelujah, because there's a war in the spirit. Because we know that if they approve that thing, it pushes the kingdom of God, amen, to another level. We're able to take that place, amen. Yes, there are certain places that the people of God cannot even come into. Why? Because we do not have clarity. We do not have understanding about those re about those realms. Are you getting the point that I'm so while Joshua was at the at the battleground, he Joshua was the man with the sword. <laughs> But having the sword, amen, is not enough to win the war. You have to have a body. You have to have an elder. You have to have a resource, amen, amen, engaging the, the principality, the past, the wicked spirit, amen, that is empowering your opponent. He said, what are you talking about? Yeah, they said, Daniel, from the very first day, you began to pray over this issue. They said, from that very day, we have heard. The, in fact, they said, the day you began to pray and you sought understanding. That's the right interpretation. And you sought understanding. They said, we have dispatched. Amen. <laughs> we have dispatched a, a, an answer of your, of your request. <laughs> they said, the angel said, but the prince of Pasha withheld me, wrestled me. Where was the wrestling? In the heavens. There are heavens over every city. Heavens over every nation. Listen, if the heavens over your business and your church, amen, has not been cleared, the powers of darkness will sit over that, over that proposal. They will sit over those things. Yes, you will, that thing will never see the light of the day. That's why people bribe their way. <laughs> of course, if you can't bribe your way, you, way, you must... <laughs> You've got to have the you have to have heaven backing you. Is either heaven is backing you or you join, amen, the affinity of compromise. If heaven is not backing you, you better know how to bribe. 
<laughs> because your proposal is never going to see the light of the day. Because there are powers, there are spirits, amen, who are positioned at the gate. And until, I told you, we cannot possess those mountains. They already possess. We have to dispossess the ones who have possessed them. That is a principle and a technology I'm going to be sharing very soon. David showed us that principle earlier. Today, everybody wants to go to Zion, Man Zion. Everybody wants to go to Jerusalem. Jerusalem or Man Zion was once a place owned by the Jebusite. Occupied. David engaged the Jebusite. I was still reading that scripture this morning. The Bible said, and the Jebusite said, no, we will not allow you into this place. We will not. And David engaged them in war and dispossessed them and turned the place to the city of David. Is the place we call Zion, friends. To access Zion, there has to be people who, are, who have the heart of David. It's not just about knowing how to war. You must have a backing. I'm asking myself, how does all of this, you know, connect to what we're dealing with in terms of the book of Acts? You better believe it, they do connect. They do connect. They do connect. There's a, there's a, there's a connection. I'm going to show you something quickly. Thank you, Father. In, in Matthew chapter, chapter 15... In Matthew chapter 15, let me read from verse 1. Then some Pharisees and teachers of the law came to Jesus from Jerusalem, the same Jerusalem that David possessed. Imagine, this will enter into blessing. They enter into favor. If David had not possessed Jerusalem, they wouldn't have been able to claim Jer Jerusalem as their place. Come on, let's read on. I just got excited. The Bible said then some Pharisees and teachers of the law came to Jesus from Jerusalem and asked him, why do your disciples break the tradition of the elders? <laughs> That's a good question. You that were born yesterday, we know where you were born. Didn't, isn't your, your, your father Joseph, you know, your mother Mary? They all grew up before us. This tradition has been there before your great, 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 great grandfather was born. Suddenly you wake up, you say you, 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 you want to change the world, you want to transform the world, and you are, you, are, you, are, you are inciting the people, you are causing the people to rebel against the tradition of the fathers. They came to Jesus and challenged it. They said, why do your disciples... If we don't have disciples who can listen and follow completely the divine blueprint, the divine organogram, the divine standard, the architecture of God's word. And we want to do church, amen, by appeasing certain people, amen. No, no, we know, we, listen, if you're going to be a true apostolic community, you cannot be a nice brother to everyone. Not because you don't want to be, but because of what you stand for. You see, all by myself, just preaching the truth, I create trouble for myself. <laughs> you know, I just, everywhere I go, it's like I create trouble. I don't mean to create trouble. But all I'm doing is just to set the standard, just to expose the people to what God is saying. And suddenly somebody hates me. Suddenly somebody doesn't want to have anything to do. I said, but you're an apostle, but you're a man of God. But, but we're supposed to be on the same page. No, I discovered that we're never on the same page. <laughs> Unfortunately, we do not come to please men. We are not men pleaser. The Bible says, if we're men pleaser, then we're not pleasers of God. You cannot please men and please God at the same time. I'm not saying go around and look for trouble, no. But I say, as long as you uphold the counsel of God's word, as long as you stand by the values of God's word, as long as the word of God defines the architecture of your life, as long as the standard of your life is mirrored after Christ, you're going to have trouble, you're going to have problems, and you're going to have enemies. So you better think again. <laughs> Do you want to continue? Let me hear what you guys are saying. Ah, amen. Thank you. 
<laughs> yes, having the sword is not enough. Having the sword is not enough. You cannot please man, yes, and please God at the same time. Certainly, my dear brother uh, uh, Jonathan, very, very, very true. You cannot. You, I'm not saying we must go around and look for trouble, no. But if you uphold, if you uphold the entire value system of Christ, if you want to go all the way, amen. Have you noticed that Jesus was the meekest man on earth, not Moses? Jesus Christ, amen. Of course, Moses was following the pattern of Jesus. I hope you understand that Jesus had been before, amen, his incarnation in the New Testament. Jesus has been there earlier since the days of beginning, amen. Yes, he was there before Moses, before Abraham. You understand? So Jesus was the meekest, he's the meekest man. In fact, when you read scripture, I don't want to begin to divert, but I can take you through, through scriptures and see what the Bible says about Jesus that he will not he will not snuff 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 away you know you know a, a, a match a match a match that you like that is going off jesus will not blow it off it won't blow it off you know i read that scripture one day i just collapsed i said lord help me some of the nature character of christ when you read that in isaiah isaiah gives you a clear image of who if you want to know who christ is don't go and look for new testament no go to the book of isaiah isaiah will give you a clear blueprint of the messiah of course from his earthly life ministry so, so if you say you want to live like jesus you want to reflect the life of jesus completely you're going to be in trouble with people because they are going to take offense the Bible says offense will come for the word's sake. Because of the word, offense will come. And well, I don't mind those kind of offense as long as amen, those offense don't stay in me. Yeah. The Bible says the Pharisee came to Jesus. While were, you know, they came to Jesus. Why do your disciples break the tradition of the law? I was defining tradition to us yesterday. Let me see if I can track it again. I said tradition is the extension of man's philosophy. Tradition is the extension of man's philosophy. Tradition is what man came to conclude, amen, as right, as true. Tradition is what man defines to be what God says, not what God says. Tradition is what people come to you know, accept as their own pattern of life. Tradition, amen, is the alternative that people have built, amen, in, in the place of the order and the standard of God for their life. Yes, it's tradition. Tradition are expressed in various ways and manners. Tradition is anything that replace what that replaces what God says or what God desires. Amen. There's a tradition, like I told you, amen. There are major traditions that defines, amen, the core values of humanity, like marriage, amen, like, you know, the position of manhood, amen, who is a woman, who is a man, amen, a position of leadership, the position of nationhood, hallelujah, the position of prosperity, the position of, you know, of, of success. There are strong traditions that define these things that when you talk about, you know, a, a successful person, You've got to be able to, you, you have to be able to see, you know, beyond the veneer of how, you know, humanity defines success. That's why our definition of success, amen, and failure differs from that of man and that of God. You understand? Yes, there are traditions to how we build church. You know, a lot of people will not believe that what I'm doing today, amen, is God sent because I'm not doing it from the, from the four walls, from the four corners of a church. I'm not behind the pulpit. Unfortunately, they can see that I'm actually having a pulpit here. <laughs> <laughs> you understand? Yes, because people say, no, no, who, 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 this guy, does he actually go to church? Because see, that's their problem. No, does this guy go to church? That's what, that's, that is what, you see, the Bible says, in the, in the, uh, Paul said to the Colossians, he says, don't, don't, don't engage in yourself on those who hold on to the leg and not onto the head. Don't engage them yourself with people, amen, who focus on the minor while they leave the major. This is what Jesus called, amen, the, the spirit of the Pharisee. He says, he says they go for minute things while they, they, they reject, they refuse, amen, the bigger issues of the kingdom of God. You see, when we track with the spirit, 
It's easy for us to identify people who are working with God. Traditions of men is very, very powerful. I'm going to show you. Why do your disciples break the traditions of the elders? Who are the elders? Who are the elders? Who are the fathers? Amen. That's a question. Where did they get their ideology from? Where did they get the belief from? How did they come about to establish the culture that defines, amen, how people live life? If our concept of civilization is built, amen, on a tradition that negates, that stands against, amen, the values of God, the standards of God, the intentions of God, amen, for humanity, we are all going to collapse. We are all going to fall. I mean, God, God wiped a whole generation because of their belief, because of their tradition, because of the philosophy that defines, amen, their existence. Yes, in the days of Noah, God said, Noah, go and tell them, go and preach to them that I hope you understand that in the days of Noah, there were elders. Amen. <laughs> there were elders. There were people who, 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 were, who were successful, who, who, were, who were prosperous. Amen. Yes, the days of Noah was a society, was a life. Amen. This is not just about, listen, when the Bible said the day of Noah, this is not just about how the Americans live. This is not just about how you know, the, the, you know, the, the, uh, the Africans live. This is amen, the value system that defines an entire generation. An entire generation. So this, the day of Noah is not just about one city. <laughs> the day of Noah is not just about one clan. It's not just about one society. We're talking about the spirit, amen, that blanketed, that defines, amen, the civilization of a whole generation. And God went after that generation. He swallowed them up in water. Think about this. This is heavy. You see, when we begin to understand the severity of challenging the values of God, the intentions of God, that position us to become a voice to the nations. That never think that there's a nation, hallelujah, that is invincible to God, that God cannot reach and judge. Never think that. Never think that there is a nation <laughs> that is so special. They say, oh, we are the apple of God's eye. Including, listen to this, including Israel. If Israel, amen, that we believe is the chosen, is the chosen nation, amen, and of course we've seen God, you know, you know uh, uh, judge that nation before. Not once, not twice. If Israel today begin to do things that negates the standards, the values of God, listen to this. As 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 hum, as a as a human to another human being, guess what? God will judge because God is a righteous judge. That's a, that's the news I've got for many people who are pro-Israel. I'm also pro-Israel. But being pro-Israel does not mean that we should not speak the truth. Being pro-Israel does not mean we must close our eyes, amen, and turn, amen, our eyes from the values of God. When you judge, when you when you are engaging a nation, you've got to engage, engage that nation based on the values. Listen to this, friends. God does not have, amen, a different Bible for the Israelis. <laughs> oh, now I've touched some things that people are gonna people are gonna dislike me the more. <laughs> But it is the truth. You know, I've seen many of our, I don't want to call them apostolic because they're very charismatic. Many of our charismatic brothers here in South Africa who are hyper, they're not just pro, they're hyper Israel. And they forget that in the word of God, amen, that there are judgments. Amen. That if you do things that negates that 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 seeks to destroy, that seeks to challenge the values of humanity, amen. I hope you understand that humanity, amen, receives its value system, amen, from the values of God. You cannot have, you cannot promote, you cannot declare humanity. You cannot talk about, let's say, Ubuntu, amen, and the values of that Ubuntu negates the values, amen, of the things of God. No, God is going to judge that, that culture, that, that, that you know, order. You understand the point that I'm making? So it is important that we see everything. That's why they say we've got to have, we've got to develop, amen, you know, kingdom perspective in dealing with life issue. 
We must have, amen, a, a, a God's view, amen, in dealing with life's issue. God is not unjust. The unjust order of men will be challenged based on the righteousness of God, based on the values of God. And if those things or those people or nation is found one thing, they will be judged. That does not necessarily mean that God, amen, is going to condemn them, but he will judge them. And the question is, when God starts judging the people, can we see it? When God starts judging a system, can we see it? When God starts judging, amen, our life, can we identify it? Because you can, you can go through the judgment of God and never know. But you're forever binding the devil. In fact, while God is judging you, you are, you are fasting. Because you, you actually assume that what you're going through, amen, is from the devil. So you're fasting. <laughs> you're fasting to get, to get off this problem. And they say, sorry, fasting is not going to solve this problem. This one is not from the devil. David understood that. When he had committed a sin, you understand? Yes, of killing another, 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 you know, uh, uh, um, another woman's husband, you understand? And out of that, you know, a relationship, a child was, you know, was conceived. <laughs> you understand? And the prophet came and said, "Yes, this is this is the judgment of God. You, David, will be spared. But guess what? The child that you have conceived." will be taken from you. He will be taken from you. And David went into prayer and fasting for God to what? To reverse this thing. And God spoke. And what was the verdict? The child died. It's important we understand. Let's read on. We're dealing with some powerful issue this morning. Verse 3. Jesus replied them. And why do you break the command of God for the sake of your tradition? Why do you break the command of God? Why do you reject? Why do you disown? Why do you stand against the command of God? So you rather keep the command of God. Amen. Excuse me. You rather keep the command of your fathers, of the elders. Amen. And reject the command of God. Meaning that, amen, the command of the elders are more important, amen, to the Pharisee than actually, amen, the command of God, than actually the voice of God. Friends, that is what is going on today in the church. We rather keep, we rather abide, amen, by the rules, by the tradition of the church, amen. You know, I mean, I was hearing some crazy things. I mean, does a church have the position, the power? Does any leader been given such a position to say to somebody that if you don't do X, Y, Z, we will condemn you. We will expel you. As long as that thing, amen, has nothing to do with the values of breaking the laws of God. If it is a law of the church, and I believe that the law of any church should be, amen, situated, established on the laws of God. Even in the place where, amen, there is sin, yes, we deal with the sin, yes, we deal with, amen, the impact of the sin, but that doesn't mean that we must declare and say, no, you are banished. We don't, we're not given such, except for the issue, amen, of apostasy. Of apostasy, when the person now decides to say, knowingly, this is my stand against God and the things of God. And the person begins to, you know, go to, 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 to the land to fight and to challenge. Then that person is excommunicated, bound from the church. I hear some things that are worrying that people are doing in the name of leadership in the church. Jesus said, why do you break? It's a question he was asking. Him, why do you break the command of God for the sake of your tradition? For God said, honor your father and mother. God said, honor. God said, not that God said, honor your father and your mother. And anyone who curses the father or mother is to be put to death. That is what God says. But you say. Excuse me, ladies and gentlemen watching me. Is that not what we are doing today? 
No, God didn't make, God did not mean that thing. You know, he didn't mean it that way. God actually did not mean mean that word that way. Now we are coming up with all kinds of false, perverted, you know, interpretation to what is clear. You know, God never actually said uh, um, a man and a man cannot marry themselves. A woman and a woman cannot marry themselves. God never really said that. <laughs> Do you have a different Bible? You see the point that I'm making? That when you stand on the values of God completely, you are going to be at loggerhead with people. Yes, you are going to offend a lot of people because today society says, today the law says, amen, today certain people say that, but this is even amen, the platform that I'm broadcasting, there are certain things. If I get to a certain level of influence right now, some of the things that I'm saying right now, they will begin to eye me and they will begin to censor it. See, the I can still say this thing and maybe get, get away with them because I've not reached certain position of, of, of influence on, on the platform. But you say. So it is, the battle is about what God says, amen, to what they say. You know, I've, like I said earlier, I've been in many trouble because I choose to stand by what God said. And this is not just to Christians alone. I mean, this is also to my family. My family before God married, my family after God married, when you stand your ground about what God says, people are not going to like you. Your family, your close, you know, loved ones are not going to like you because they will think you're going too far. But how far is too far when you are standing with what God says? This is what God is trying to correct amen, in the life of the man that is going to carry the baton of leadership amen, as the church enter into a new sphere. I'm only highlighting these things for you to know that for you to be able to cross that bridge amen, into the new level, into the new phase, into the new arena of God's prophetic advancement, you have to decide for yourself, do you want to live there, amen, the traditions of the fathers. Listen to this. The traditions of the fathers does not stop you from practicing your Christianity as long as it does not challenge, it does not, amen, fight, it does not stop in the in the way of what they believe of what they are their desire of their own agenda they don't mind let's coexist it's a position of compromise and this is what we found in Acts chapter 9 as God prepares Peter to enter into amen a new day where he must now begin to engage with people they don't have anything to do with As God continue, amen, to challenge. Have you noticed that the point and the place that God started challenging Peter, amen, is from a position of, of his appetite, of his food. If Peter was going to go, amen, and minister to Colinius, the centurion. Centurion is not just some ordinary guy. A centurion, amen, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the Roman uh, world, in the Roman you know, uh, 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 empire leadership, is a highly, highly influential person. A, a centurion, hallelujah, is in charge of a regiment of, of, of you know, highly skilled warriors. I hope you understand that in the Roman world, amen, how powerful, how, how, how strong you are on the war field, amen, defines even your political influence. It's an environment that is built around, amen, military might. Rome conquered the world. Centurions, amen, are, you know, these are, these are leaders in a different class. Highly committed. All right? To their military you know, mission. The people under them. Highly committed to them. I mean. When you talk about this. When you learn about the Roman. Amen, military uh, uh, philosophy. I mean. 
They don't go back to say to their masters, to their, you know, to their leaders that we couldn't take that place. We couldn't conquer. No. That's why they've got some of the best, you know, uh, uh, you know, you know, if you talk about concept of, of warfare. No matter how big, how lanky, how tall, how high your wall, <laughs> when they are when they are determined to conquer, to take that city, they will take it. These are highly disciplined, trained warriors. I love to watch the Roman uh, 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 movies. Because I learn a lot, you know, just looking at the sheer discipline of these people. Discipline. When they make up their mind, this is it, it is it. You don't start thinking, no. So this centurion guy earlier, he's in search for God. This guy has come to realize that, you know, Worshipping Pluto, Jupiter, you know, uh, uh, Mercury, and 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 Venus, and all this, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, Greek mythology that they've surround themselves with, and all these little gods. And, and I hope you understand that the Romans also worship gods. They worship gods. They've got powerful, amen, you know, affinity to the spirit world. You know, people think the Romans are just about warfare, power. No, they are, they are in unison, amen, with powers, with forces of darkness. They, that's why they, they love their women because they see their women as, you know, as priestess that can easily, that can easily access the spiritual realm. You see certain women, all right, you know, children, ladies, you know, you know, girls born into the Roman, you know, uh, uh, society, all right, they, they consecrate them, they separate them, all right, never to get married, never to sleep, amen, with a man. They consecrate them in their, in their, you know, in their, in their, in their temple, all right, to, to be the, you know, go in between, to access the spirit realm as perverted, amen, you know, as perverted sexually as, you know, the Roman society is. Yet there are women, amen, that are consecrated. And if there are men, all right, I mean, you've got all kinds of, even, you know, uh, 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 you know uh, homosexuals, you know, that, you know, all kinds of crazy things that they do, amen, just to appease and access the spirit realm to gain power. So that they can dominate the earth. And listen to this. That's not just something that died with the Roman Empire. That spirit is still very much alive today in society. My point is this, this Roman amen, centurion has gone through all of this thing. I've seen all of this thing. But it is in search for God. Is in search, just like a lot of people in, in high places are in search for God. You know, there's a trace in the scripture. And since the since the period we began this training, this teaching, I've been I've been picking that. It's not something that I have actually sat down to study, but I've just noticed that you know, as we look through, as we journey through the book of Acts, you will notice that God always eyes certain key leaders and he uses them as a pointer, as a, as a go in between, as a bridge, amen, as a point to cross into, amen, the next thing that he's going to do in terms of his prophetic uh, uh, agenda. I've seen that. Uh, we began with, you know, somebody like uh, uh, Peter, and then you look at Stephen, all right, and then you carry on. You you look at Barnabas, all right. You you, you see those points. Then we saw Paul, amen. You, you see. Now we're dealing with another key leader. This man is a leader. The centurion. You see, Values and principle of how to access nations, how to access a man society. You know, <laughs> I just thought of something which is very important. You know, I like the concept of going out on the street, amen, and crusading and ministering to people. You get people healed and all of that. That is very good. But we have to also begin to, you know, correct. We need to begin to revamp. We need to begin to update our evangelistic concept. We need to begin to, amen, see how we can raise, amen, well-competent, amen, men and women 
who targeted certain who would target certain key people in society, particularly when we see that those people are not far from the kingdom. That's how we know. You look for those people that are not far from the kingdom. Their, their attitude, their behavior, their character, amen, their, their utterance. When you hear somebody speak, you will know, ah, this person is not far from the kingdom. What do we do? The church, they need to take such people up in prayer. We begin to pray, amen, that God will bring them to the, to the place, to the day of the breaking, amen. And while that is happening, God positions somebody around them, hallelujah, that can easily minister to them. You see, it's easy to minister to certain people via proximity, via the, you know, the influence, the relationship that, amen, we have with them. All right. I, imagine your maybe your boss, your your big boss. All right, and and you you've noticed that maybe this person take a liking in you. You understand, but you've not you know summoned the courage to to minister to them. And of course, you can't do that if if you are not led by the Spirit. All right, but you you prayer has been going on. Hallelujah. And a day comes, either the Spirit of God leads you or something happens around you that gives you the opportunity. You must be ready. To drop the ball, to show, to tell. This is it, sir. This is it now. And you'll be surprised. I've seen that happen. We must understand that concept. Because when that person gets saved, listen, that person becomes an opening. Of course, this is the principle we saw with Paul. How do you think Paul was able to have such a huge platform? Because of his influence. Because of his leadership position. Yes. Why do you think the Pharisees were using Paul? Because they knew, amen, they, they knew the, the, the resume, the profile of Paul. Amen. He wasn't just somebody who is close to the Jewish society. He was a man, amen, who had, you know, friends in high places. Felix was his friend. King Agrippa, amen, knew him. I'm not sure they were friends, but they knew Paul. You understand? Paul knew this top military, uh, uh, you know, Roman, you know, uh, 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 people. He understand. It's easy for him. In fact, Felix will have released Paul, thinking that Paul was going to bribe him. He was still thinking he was dealing with the Paul of before. He didn't know that this Paul has changed. Paul said, "No, I plead my case to Caesar. To Caesar." This guy is not afraid. This guy is bold. We need, we need amen, apostolic men amen, who have been trained. You see, in business, there are, certain, there are certain business that you cannot go into except you have developed amen, certain you know, uh, uh, you know, cloud around yourself. That's how it works in the business world. There are certain things you want to do. They just look at you and say, no. Even if you have the money, no. You are not welcome in this space. This space is not for somebody like you. Um, people who are in the business world, they will know what I'm talking about. There are certain places you can't go, you can't speak. There are certain societies that you cannot penetrate them. Yes. They're, they're like cults. You know, certain business are like cults. Certain people, you know, uh, that, that business only, you know, circulate among certain people. For you to penetrate that in our space. God, you must allow God to walk in your life. And God will be telling you things you must do, places you must go, people you need to connect with, hallelujah, to develop the kind of cloud. If you call it, if you like, call it, amen, a rebranding of your life. When God finishes with you, when I hear you then, they say, name your price. You tell them, sorry, it's not about price. I want to share here. There are people who say, no, we'll buy you out. 20 million. 50 million. 100 million. What's your price? The issue is they don't want you there. So they buy you out. But you say, sorry, it's not about that. No, you can't buy me. I want, I want to be a shareholder here. I want to have a place here. You see, certain things. God will help us, church. That when we get to a certain level, we know that it's not just about money. It's about having a share. If your company is, is seeking to, to sell shares and you know the prospect, you know amen, the potential of that company, I beg, I beg you, buy the share. Become a shareholder. 
See, there are things we need to understand that will allow us to grow and become what the Lord, amen, has ordained for us. We're dealing with shifting from a traditional mindset to a kingdom order of life so that the society of the people of God can increase. Our influence can increase. Our position, amen, on the, on the earth earlier can continue to impact and transform to the degree of redeeming creation that is growing in Christ. Waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. Do we want to manifest in this new day? Yes, we want to manifest. But how to manifest are the things we need to know. Because manifestation is not just about handorobo shakaya. When you pray, we need strategy. When you pray, we need skill. When we pray, hallelujah, we need direction. We need an arrowhead. We need somebody that will say, come, let's go. We've got to put shoe leathers to our prayer. We've got to put shoe leather to our prayer. Show me your faith. I will show you my faith by my works. James said. I will show you my faith via my works. Hallelujah. We will remain where we were before coronavirus. Before the great reset. If we refuse to reset ourselves. If we refuse to engage our life, amen, in the reality of the new day principles and the kind of system that will allow us, amen, to flow like a river. You can't stop a river. Why we want to be a mountain, hallelujah, that people can stream to. But we must also become a river that can flow into places, into regions, into realms. Hey, may God give us all this strategy. We want to be a fire that will consume and purify. Hallelujah. We must become like a wind that cannot be stopped. The church must take all the various face and dimension of expression. And these are all things the scripture refers to be. We're like a river. Hallelujah. We are, we are like a fire that refines. We are the refining furnace. We refine the nations. We refine ourselves. Yes. And if there's anything in us that is not of God, let the furnace, let the fire of God burn them away. Yes. We are like a river of water flowing. Out of Eden, four heads of river, river flowed out. Hallelujah out of Eden. Yet we are the mountain unshakable, unbreakable, unmovable. This is our, these are our patterns, amen, of how to engage the new day. Jesus said, amen, why do your fathers, why do you also break the tradition of God? Why you accuse my, my, my disciples of breaking the, the traditions of the Father? Jesus replied, why do you break the command of God for the sake of your own tradition? You break the command of God. Friends, it's time to say goodbye to the traditions of men. It's time to say goodbye to the traditions. What are the traditions? Yesterday I asked us, find your own tradition. And if you can't find it, amen. Look for people that can help you point them out. Look for people that can help you highlight them out. Sometimes the way people help us to find our uh, blind spot may be very challenging to us. We may not like it because of their manner of communication. Well, don't, don't, don't kill the messenger. You may not like it, but don't kill the messenger. Embrace the message. Some people, amen, they are, they are more wise in terms of how they, you know, uh, sandwich the message and pass it across to us. Some people are not that, particularly if you're dealing with, you know, some rugged prophets, you know, they just say the way it is. But whichever way, accept it and correct, amen, that, that flaw, that, you know, fault, amen. Embrace that, you know, 
you know, message. Make sure you deal with that blind spot because if you don't, it will hinder you from going further. And if you go further, all right, it will stop you from being approved. Don't say, well, this is me. This is who I am. That's the No, it's not who you are. I like, I like, you know, what we read yesterday. Because when God finally introduced the ministry of Paul into the church, we were told that the church had great peace. Great peace was upon the church. Hallelujah. Let me read that scripture again. The Bible says, Amen. In Acts chapter 9 verse 31. And this is very important. This is not just by the way. When Paul was introduced. When this resource was brought into the church. In, remember the church has been growing. But this is a different position that will change. That will quantum leap the church to the next level. The Bible says. Then the church throughout Jerusalem. Amen. Galilee and Samaria enjoyed a time of peace. The church was strengthened and encouraged by the Spirit. It grew in number, living in the fear of God. Why? Because a resource was brought. The traditions of men that, that almost killed this time of joy amen, and increase in Jerusalem, in Samaria, and in Galilee hallelujah, was dealt with because a man by the name amen, uh, uh, Barnabas was able to exercise his leadership position quickly. Hallelujah. Well, this is where I stopped yesterday. It seems this is where I'm going to stop again today, this morning. Because I, I'm looking at the time. We've done an hour, uh, almost 40 minutes. Alright? But I'm sure by now you get what we're dealing with. Transiting, amen, from the church was baptized, the church has been filled, but the church was still, amen, captured, being influenced by that strong gold, amen, of tradition. And the tradition has become part of how even the church operated. And this had hindered the church from fully exhibiting, exercising, amen, a governing authority as a, as a regiment of God in the earth, as a regent of God in the earth. And so God introduced Paul, who came with a different flair, who came with a different order, who came with a different you know, concept of, 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 of ministry. He came with a different, you know, pattern and strategy, amen, that will, amen, you know, frog lip the church to a higher position of influence. And I like this. So tomorrow we're going to be dealing with, you know, uh, uh, um, the issues of, of Peter in the house of, uh, uh, and, and the house of uh, uh, the centurion. Because, like I said, this is a transition from Acts chapter 10, you are going to see that the dynamics from Acts chapter 10, of course, 11, the dynamics of the church has changed. The dynamics of the church has changed. And I hope, I pray that all that we have been dealing with, because this point should be a point where we need to really pause and look back to some of the things that we have dealt with. And ask ourselves, are there issues that we need to correct? Are there blind spots in our life? Are there points that we need to amen, engage? Because from chapter 11, 12 further, it's a different order of church. By the time you get to 11, you now realize that the church is no longer led by one man. <laughs> the church has become amen, a community of elders. So you see, amen, moving away from that infant stage, hallelujah, yes, to that position of development, we're going on to know the way of the ecclesia. Now the church is going to become more outreaching. Now the church is going to be going into nations. And you're going to be seeing Paul being sent into nations. But he didn't just go. He, he himself sent others. This man, amen, began to raise people, the, the Titus, amen, the Timothy, and the others, amen, who, whom he raised to become arrowheads. In the advancement of the things of God. Paul was a game changer. He's still a game changer. And he's still a pattern for us. Amen. 
the things that God spoke. In fact, there is one scripture I would have loved to read, but I'm going to read that scripture tomorrow. Uh, uh, I'll show you that scripture quickly. Maybe you want to check it out so that when, when uh, um, I come tomorrow, we are then familiar uh, with, with the scripture. you find it in Colossians chapter 2, 7 to 8. All right? It says, uh, be rooted and being built up in, in, in Christ. Establish, amen, in the faith as you were thought, amen, and overflowing with thanksgiving. It says, see to it. Make it a priority. See to it that no one takes you captive. That no one takes you captive. No one entices you. Amen. No one captures you. No one takes you captive. Through the philosophy and empty deception. Which is based on human tradition. So you see human tradition amen, has a mission. The mission is to take us captive. Is to bring us to a point of submission, amen. To to you know to 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 chain to demonic hallelujah stronghold to to satanic hallelujah uh, influence. Yes, human tradition, amen, is a deception that the enemy uses to limit us, to cripple us. You you can't do this. Nobody in your home, your family, in your church has ever done such a thing. Tradition limits our ability to be creative. It limits our ability to be innovative. Traditions of men cripples us. When new things are being introduced, we use our own hand to, to tear them because we think those things, amen, are challenging what has always been. What has, been, what has always been is good, but if they are no longer relevant and cannot bring an answer to the, to the reality of the day, we have to change it. And the Lord, hallelujah, in fact, the way the Lord designed his church is that the church is dynamic, hallelujah, is dynamic, excuse me, the church is dynamic, amen, in its advancement, in its operations in the earth. The church, amen, is not stationary. The church is not fixed on one pattern of life or thinking uh, of operation, amen. The church is not, amen, built and based on one ideology. You see, there are people who have all kinds of, you know, uh, 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 you know beliefs and ideology of what the church means, you know. Some churches are built and, you know, it was Paul who said, he said, is the church divided? You are for Apollos, you are for Cephas, you are for, you know, Jesus. He said, is, 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 is the church divided? Come on. You have to understand that the church is multidimensional. The church earlier is multidimensional and the church is multi, you know, uh, 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 you know, uh, you know, the church is multidimensional and the influence of our operation earlier deals with the nature, amen, and the unique reality of where we are sent to. In other words, the church in America should not be looking like the church in South Africa. Because, amen, the church in South Africa has a different demography, has a different, you know, opera operation, amen. Except we are influenced by the Western culture, which to a certain degree I frown at, amen. We should not allow certain culture to define to us how we must live and operate our life to such a degree, amen, that we, we elevate that tradition or that culture above the laws of God. <laughs> we will continue on this tomorrow if the Lord permits us. I believe once again this morning we have established some powerful truth. There are traditions of our fathers in Africa that have crippled. I mean, thousands of people this morning will be gathered around, amen, what is captured by the traditions of men while they are preaching the Bible. People that are, you know, they, they have pledged their allegiance to certain tradition and they have, you know, they have systematically pushed aside what God says. We believe more in what, amen, the bishop of the church says, we believe more in what, amen, the, 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 the council, amen, the eldership council, amen, says. We believe more in what, amen, the, the, the provincial head of, you know, that church, you know, says than what the word of God says. You know, one of the reasons why I, I broke away from so many, uh, you know, uh, 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 networks, even those who claim to be apostolic, when I saw that the things they were doing, amen, stands against the word of God. You know, it's not aligning to the standard of God. In fact, the more I saw that the people were projecting, you know, more honor to the man rather than, amen, the values and the principle of what brought us together, I said to myself, no more. I'm not staying here. 
I'm not staying here. I love to I love to gather with people. I love to be with people. I mean, I'm a people. In fact, I remember when I was in Bible school, people used to call me you know Barnabas because I love to connect people together. But when I saw, amen, that people are doing things to promote themselves, to propagate their own agenda, I withdraw myself. Even if you're if you are my family member, I will withdraw from you. Because I do not think that there is anything that we must honor more. We must honor people, love them, respect them. But when it comes to the values of God, our honor must be aligned to the standard of God's word. All right? I will not honor people to the point where I dishonor God. I believe this morning we have established some powerful principles. So tomorrow we'll continue from Colossians chapter 2 verse 8. We're dealing with something I hope will help us to better adjust our life, our perspective. Listen, when you begin to realize that man cannot make you, man do not have the final say over your life, that a church do not have the final say over your life, that an organization cannot define, amen, your, your success or failure. When you fully have a revelation of Christ, you will love people and honor them, but you will never succumb to their witchcraft. You will never succumb to their witchcraft. Let me repeat it again. You will never succumb, amen, to, to their witchcraft, to the level that they use deception to capture you. There are people who ought to have left certain churches, but the, the apostle, the prophet, or the bishop of the church has told them, the day you leave this church, you're going to die. So you keep the people bound in fear. I want to say to you, if you know such a person or you're one of those people that something has been said to you, all right, listen, everyone has got the right to live wherever, wherever they want to live. Nobody should position themselves in the place of God in our life. So if you're one of them or you know somebody, amen, I proclaim you free right now. I declare, listen to this, even if you're going to do that thing out of rebellion, do it. Because God is going to deal with you. But no man should be able to tell you what to do and what not to do. Nobody. Nobody should define your life. Should control your life to the point where you live in fear. That's the point that I'm hitting. If I have to capture and control people via fear, I will not have the boldness to declare the things that I'm declaring. You want to run a church by fear? It's going to collapse. I know a lot of pastors do that. They run the church via fear. You do all kinds of things to keep the people. No, let the people go. I gave us a word while we were preaching. Jesus said, I am the door. He opened the door for the sheep to go out and to come in. Listen, if the sheep are, if, if the sheep are yours, if they go out, they will find their way back home in the night. The sheep always know the way back home. So don't control people. Don't manipulate them. Don't intimidate them. Don't use prayer, Allah, to control people. <laughs> if, they are, if, 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 if the apostle has not prayed, the bishop has not prayed. And I'm sorry to say there are very wonderful people that I know who are bishop or apostle, but these are the terminologies they use. That's, that's why I'm using the terminology, all right? Yes. Jesus said, not everyone that say to me, Lord, Lord, will enter. So it's just a term, all right? We know them by their fruits. So please, don't get angry with me by using the term. That's the term they use. They call their, their pastors, apostle, bishop, prophet, you know, canon, chief canon, whatever it is. It does not really matter. What matters is the configuration of the heart. Let's be free. For freedom, Christ came. For freedom, Christ came. Christ came to set us free. And I proclaim freedom upon your life. Let people learn to, amen, to experience their mistake. Yes. Let them see that it's not always green on the other side. Yes. We saw that in scripture several times. Even in the garden, God could have come down and saved the day and said, Adam, you are sleeping. Something is about to be taken from you. Wake up. God was watching them. Yes. When, when, when Eve was having the conversation, yesterday I was thinking about that. You know, I always say that Adam abdicated his, res, you know, his, his responsibility by not informing Eve of what is expected. And the Lord corrected me yesterday. Eve was informed, but she did not take 
the advice of Adam. I mean, I've always said, oh, maybe Adam did not teach if, you know, give if. No, no. You can, you can know the truth. You can be informed about the truth. You still have to decide if you're going to abide by what you know. If was informed. She was just irresponsible. Amen. And Adam did not intervene. And I think that's where he made a mistake. He could have interrupted. I mean, of course, these are all probability now. He could have interrupted and said, but if, no. Lord, help us. God, give us a people that you have called unto us to impart, to build, to train, to teach the things that will allow us to better represent your intention in this new day. This is my prayer this morning. What a word. What, what an engagement again, Father. I can only but to say thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for the dawning of a new day. Thank you, Father, for the light of your spirit upon our hearts. May we open to this light that is flood in our space. May we respond to this knock on the doors of our hearts. May we open to you. Thank you once again for my brethren who have joined to hear these words that flows from you. These are not my words. These are your words. I'm only but a mouthpiece. I'm only proclaiming and declaring the things that you have prepared for us. I thank you once again that this word will continue to lead us. We will continue to be adjusted by this word. This word will continue to guide our steps. Lord, I pray, Lord, that this word will continue to empower us, energize us to become indeed a vessel that you have ordained for this season. Help us to know that this is the most glorious day. This is the most glorious seasons of our life, Lord, that is not over, that it cannot be over until you say it's over. So let, let, the, let the sky fall. Let the mountain fall. Whatever may be happening, let them continue to happen. But there's a river whose streams may glad the city of God. God is in the midst of her, that we will not be moved, that we will not be shaken, that you who have brought us into the light of this new day will continue to lead us further, will continue to guide us onward until we come to the full light of the day. Spirit of God, I thank you. I thank you. Once again, we receive, yes, all of the nutrient of heaven, all of the grace of heaven. May Christ continue to grow in us as we go through a day that is infested with all kinds of virus, all kinds of germs, all kinds of bacteria, all kinds of satanic and demonic influence. Father, we declare that this day we receive a boost, oh God, yes, a boost of our immune system, immune system that guides our minds, our thought. Thank you for Christ in us, the hope of glory yes continue to raise ourselves as we break forth into new day as we break forth into new territory thank you that your will will prosper in our hands we will not be defeated you will be glorified in us you will be glorified through us your will will find expression in our life. Your kingdom will continue to advance. You will, Father, find a people in the earth, oh God, just as you find Noah, just as you found Enoch, just as you find Abigail, Deborah, just as you find, yes, Saul of Tarsus. Lord, you will continue to find people like Stephen in our day. We declare these are the days of the awakening. Yes, Lord, uh, of, the, of, your, of your representatives. Uh, we are the regions we are the embassy of Christ in the earth Lord we declare in the name of Jesus is a day of awakening is a day of resurrection we are crossing over we are stepping the boundaries we, are, we have crossed the Rubicon we are coming to the place of the fullness of Christ maturity is our portion Lord we are not frivolous we are not frivolous we have learned to quiet in our soul like a child weaned from the mother's breast Lord, our eyes are on you. Our minds are set on you today. 
We declare in the name of Jesus, Lord, that we are awakened to the nature of the ministry. Yes, that you have committed into the hand of your ecclesia. It seems the ecclesia is weak and tired in this season. It seems as if we don't know what to do. We're just going through the motions. Yes, that's the honest truth. But Lord, we know in the midst of this, oh God, there's a stirring of the waters. <laughs> There is a stirring of the waters. We are hearing the sound of the new day. We are hearing the, the, the proclamation, the blowing of the shofar. Thank you, Father, for the awakening of your sphere. Thank you, Father, once again, that we can hear the flappings of the wings of the eagle. Thank you, Lord, for eyesight that you're giving to us, Lord, to see through the fog, to see through, oh God, the mist, that we know what is coming. For the joy set before us, we endure. We endure the days of corona. We endure the days of death. We endure the days of famine. We endure the days, oh God, where, yes, we are being battered and bruised. But like, like Paul said, what is it that can separate us from the love of God? Father, infuse once again upon our heart the revelation of the love of your son. Help us once again to be awakened, to be determined, Lord, to be persuaded that we will not be moved. That we are not shaking, oh God. Thank you, Lord, because you are building your church and the gates of hell, the gates of Hades will not prevail. Thank you, Lord, that your church is marching on. Yes, Lord, like the armies, yes, oh God, of, of, of heaven, we are marching on, oh God, with as a regiment, we are pressing on, we are going, we are breaking barriers, limitation. Yes, this is a church call, yes, into a day of breakthrough. We thank you, Spirit of God, that nothing will stop this church, nothing will stop this church that you're building. The gates of hell will not stop us. Thank you, Father, a church relevant uh, yes in the corridors of power a church relevant oh god yes father in society transformation in nation building a church empowered with grace a church anointed uh, yes father a church anointed yet yeah, the anointing uh, is well uh, build up resource oh god well focus to achieve what you have anointed her for thank you oh god as Esther surrendered to the ministry of Mordecai, preparing her for the day of the showing forth of that which she has. She's already beautiful. But Lord, she needed someone to build values in her. Because beauty is not going to be enough for the king to select us. She needed, yes, Mordecai to build value. Anda bakaya tosu bragayanda. Spirit of God, we thank you. That value is what we need. Value is what display our beauty. Yes. Value is what reflects, yes, the true lasting beauty. That when the wrinkles begin to show, it is the values, yes, Lord, that will keep us alive, that will keep us alive, and that will keep us relevant at the palace. Thank you, Spirit of God, for the scepter of value, for the authority in the name of Jesus, of grace. Thank you, Father, for the expression of wisdom. Wisdom builds this house. We break away from the wisdom of the world. We break away. We severe ourselves from the knowledge of this world. We are not partakers of the, of the fruit, fruit of the tree of life. We are heading towards the tree of life. We are journeying towards the tree of life. We feed on the tree of life. We feed on the tree of life. We are feeders of the tree of life. We eat from the tree of life in the name of Jesus. We receive life this morning, Lord, to our body. We receive life this morning to our system. We receive life this morning to our minds, to our thought, life to our faculty. In the name of Jesus, as we get ready once again to break forth into September, to break forth in the name of Jesus, into a day of warfare and victory, we declare in Jesus name there's no turning back there's no turning back there's no turning back in the name of Jesus there is no turning back there's no turning back we proceed we, pro we proceed we advance we procure in the name of Jesus grace in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth we eat the fruits of our lips we say what we believe because what we believe 
is from the living word of God. Not just from dead written word, but from the very living word of God. Jesus said the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. We release the spirit and life of God into our lives. I release the spirit and life of God into your space right now. You watching me, I declare right now, is there any area of your life that the enemy... Is seeking to control, is seeking to manipulate, is seeking to use the philosophy of this world that is empty to manipulate you. I declare right now, receive in the name of Jesus life, direction, insight, understanding, wisdom, grace. Be empowered, be emboldened in Jesus' name. Go forth right now. Begin to claim your possession. Begin to claim your possession. Begin to claim that mountain. Like Caleb said, give me this mountain. 70 years ago. 40 years ago, I was promised this mountain. I'm able. My vision is still very much alive. You see, it takes a determined person to be given a promise, to be given a word. Four decades ago, four decades later, this person still says, I am willing, I am ready, I am alive, I'm able. <laughs> Lord, this is the kind of vision we need in your church. That we will not be judged by time. That we will not be defeated by time. That we will not be defeated by time. The Bible says, while the, while the bridegroom, yes, lingered. While there was a delay, they went asleep. They fell asleep. Ah, Father, I pray today as I pray for my brethren. I pray for myself that we will not go into slumber. We will not allow the pressure of the day lead us back to Egypt. That we will not decide to go back to Egypt. No. That Lord our eyes are set on the promised land. And we are determined Lord to continue to go forth. To continue to advance. That we will not allow time to judge us Lord. Kings are being judged by time. Leaders are being judged by time. Nations are being judged by time. Father we procure the capacity to lay hold of time. Ah, we declare in Jesus name that time you will begin to work for us. Uh, that day by day we are renewed uh, as we continue to look, uh, yes Lord, uh, into the perfect love liberty. We declare our vision uh, is a life. Our vision is strength. Uh, we will come Lord daily to be washed uh, in the washing of the mud that we can see with clarity. We will not be judged by time. We will not be judged by time. Generations are judged by time. We will not be judged by time law. We will finish our course like David. Bible says, and David served his generation. David served his generation. Lord, that we will serve, oh God, your intention for our generation. Yes, Lord, in rest, in peace, oh God. Not in pieces, but in peace. We declare that this day once again, we overcome the spirit of destruction. We overcome the spirit of destruction. The spirit that weakens man. The spirit that shut down the lungs of man the spirit that shut down the kidneys of man the spirit that shut down the ability for man to produce and continue to advance the will of God we declare you shall proceed no further we come against you you foul spirit of corona we declare we dethrone you over this nation we dethrone you over our homes over our family we dethrone you over our loved ones in the name of Jesus uh, we pull you down we declare you shall proceed no more further we know that the activity and what men are trying to do in the natural realm is good we celebrate medicine yes but we know this is a spiritual war and therefore we take our place uh, like Moses like Aaron and all took their place uh, on the mountain on the hill father we take our place as your church uh, and we begin to neutralize the power yes the authority the flames uh, the authority of corona in the in the earth of man we neutralize that thing wherever you're coming from we declare in Jesus name you have have no more power and so as we deal with the delta variants we are dealing with in the name of jesus the alpha variant that they say is already happening somewhere we say you shall proceed no further as a church will rise and we say move back in the name of jesus we dislodge you we neutralize you we frustrate you in the name of jesus every demonic system every satanic system uh, that is connected to this spirit uh, and whatever they are cooking up uh, in the name of jesus lord uh, we scatter them lord uh, in their lab in jesus and we pray Lord resource our 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 doctors our researchers 
particularly here in Africa, their plan has always been to depopulate Africa. We know that plan has not ceased, but we say in the name of Jesus, they shall proceed no further. Because we thank you for what you're doing right now. Yesterday I was reading something. Paul Kigami had able to acquire certain uh, 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 resource and favor to produce vaccine in Rwanda. We thank God for that. Yes. You see, African nation must rise up. We must be able to show the world that we are competent when they see what we are doing. Not every time we're stretching our hand. They must see what we are doing. We're not a third world country. We've never been a third world country. Africa is the, is the richest real estate. And I'm not just talking about minerals. I'm not just talking about something buried under the ground. I'm talking about in terms of human capital. Africans have some of the best brains. You look at what is going on in Europe. Check the people behind those breakthroughs. Behind those scientific breakthrough, those technological breakthrough, is either they're from Nigeria or they're from South Africa or they're from Ethiopia, from Ghana, from somewhere in Africa, you always find them there. We refuse the spirit of brain drain. Brain drain cease. Brain drain cease from Africa. Father, give us godly leaders who will invest in the life of people. You don't invest. In the continent of Africa, if you don't invest in Africans, we don't need and then people coming from overseas and then, to you know to 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 refine what is buried on ground. We have the capacity, the capability. So let's understand the war. Let's understand where the battle is, and you better believe it. There's a battle over the resource and the resources of this nation. So let's stop fighting, you know, foolish battles. Take the battle to where you know will hit the enemy the most. Our battle is not flesh and blood. You know, we have to pray like this because this continent is not a forgotten continent. No, I refuse to accept that. The same Bible we have is the same Bible they have. The same word of God we have is the same word of God they have. It's time for a change. Come on, declare with me. Say it. Proclaim it into the atmosphere of your space. Change has come. You see, words are spirit and life. When you release a word, you can't take it back. Because that word is, is back with spirit and life. And when they release a word of destruction into the atmosphere, if you are not in the right spiritual environment, you, you are not secure. That, if that word alight over your space, it will manifest what has been decreed. So you've got to, you've got to counter amen, the wrong words over the realm of your, of your nation, of your city. You see, activity that takes place, activities that we allow to take place, amen, without our understanding, always cause people to say things. Always cause people to react. And when you react, you know, you, you, you don't say, when you react, you hardly say the right thing. You say the wrong thing. And those words empower principality to go and do more havoc. There are all kinds of things that have been, have been, that have happened in South Africa in the past few months. That have caused men to, you know, to say all kinds of things. But we want to begin to clear. You see, I, watch, I, I was watching when certain people were posting. They said, ah, now it's time to mop up. It's time to mop up. They were mopping, you know, they were mopping the street. I said, it's good to mop the street, but we've got to mop the spiritual atmosphere first. <laughs> Who will mop the spiritual atmosphere that allow this activity to take place in the earth? It's good to mop. We can mop streets. But can we mop the spiritual realm? Can we clean up? Can we dislodge? Can we, can we have a clean earlier spiritual atmosphere that is not toxic? Amen. By corruption, by wickedness. Such that the reign of God can fall. The will of God, hallelujah, can, can, you know, can rain down righteousness. Righteousness exhausts a nation. 
Sin is a reproach. We are quick to react in doing temporal things. It's good. But it's not good enough. Are you seeing? The church has job. Places where people have been killed, maimed, all kinds of destruction. The church needs to go there. Hallelujah. Is it because when evil, when we allow evil to take place over a realm, all right, and there is no justice there. You know what you have just done? You have just legitimized the spirit of wickedness over that realm. So when somebody is killed in a place, when there is something terrible that has happened in the place, all right, even in the world of the Sangoma, they know that they say they're going to cleanse the place. You know? But we know that <laughs> they can't really cleanse the place because you have to have power to dislodge. You go to cleanse the place, you are reinforcing the demon. So we need, we need elders. We need, you will see this in the scripture. It's there all over. We need elders. We need governmental elders that will literally go to a place, amen, and proclaim the decree of God, hallelujah, and release, amen, the spirit of cleansing over the atmosphere. You know, not this religious thing people are going around doing. No, I'm talking about people who have the understanding, who have the, who have the sight. There are certain things that no matter how you want to do it, how I want to do it, amen, we will not be able to do it because those demons are not going to listen. Those principality will not listen to you because they know your ranking. But when we pray and say, God, unite our leaders, bring the church together. When, 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 imagine if, if, if apostles, elders from different realms go to a place and proclaim the counsels of God. I'm telling you, they will remove even, even leaders, governors, they will remove them. Our problem is the end, we have allowed the enemy to use this unity, amen, <laughs> to continue to rule. We allow the enemy to use the, uh, my, my church is better than yours. Your church is bigger than mine. No, you have a smaller church. So who are you to make? No, it doesn't work like that. May God continue to build the church. May we continue to get hallelujah, understanding. So we understand that, amen, when we come together, we we'll become a force. And all we need to do is to make proclamation. That's all. You don't, need, you don't even need a chauffeur. You don't need a ram's horn. You need the unity of the faith of the body of Christ. I'm a prophet, but have you ever seen me with a ram's horn? Let's stop, you know, making spiritual things sound foolish to the principalities. I'm not talking about men. Traditions of men will say, oh, they've come with ram's horn. Poor, poor. Your ram's horn, Ilea, does not change anything. Your ranking in the spirit, your position in the spirit does not need a ram's horn. You're a prophet. You're a sound. My voice is a sound. It's not how loud the sound is, Ilea. It's the spirit behind the sound. For all I care, you can, I can get... A, you know, a, a, a trumpet. Because to blow a ram song, you've got to understand the spirit behind sacrifice. Let's not go into all of that. <laughs> I thought I was going to close. <laughs> oh, Jesus. You can get angry with me if, 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 if I've stepped on your tradition of a ram's horn. You can get angry with me, but that's okay. Jesus did not blow a ram's horn. Neither did Paul. Neither did, neither did Peter. All of the key leaders of the New Testament church did not carry a ram's horn. But they were authority in the earth. <laughs> they were governments. They shift things. They move things. He said, are you against ram's horn? I'm against how they use it. I'm against how they have made the things of God non-effect. I'm against how we easily fall for traditions of men. We call it spiritual. I'm against how people are chipping the spirit of the prophetic, the spirit of intercession. The devil, he laughs over you. And sometimes he gives you a little victory there. Meanwhile, the major stronghold, he keeps him. <laughs> He keeps himself. He says, just give them. The, all they want is to see some breakthrough. Just give them a little breakthrough. Ah, God has answered their prayer. Are you fool? You can see. You're blind. Hey, I'm in trouble again. <laughs> they tell me I'm using foul language. <laughs> but, but I guess foolishness is not a foul language because it's in the word of God. 
You foolish Galatian, Paul said. People are behaving foolish when they're supposed to be mature, mature saints. When you are to be teachers, you still need men to teach you. This is what is getting me angry. There's work to be done. I thought I was supposed to be closing. We're doing two hours. Let's close. Father, we thank you. Pray for me, friends. Pray for me. Pray for me. This work requires that we are supported. Just pray for me. Grace upon this man's life. Thank you, Father. I receive every word of prayer. Thank you, Jesus. I'm renewed in my strength. I'm renewed in my vision. Thank you, Lord, for grace, understanding. Thank you, Father, for newness. Thank you, yes, Lord. I'm refreshed. I'm refreshed. I know we've dealt with some powerful spirit that don't want to be exposed. But that's our mandate. As kingdom apostolic regents, we are not dealing with little things. We go for the real things. We go for the major things, yes. We go for the high places. Thank you, Father. I bless your name. I glorify your name. Open doors for us to do more for you. And your kingdom may continue to expand. We declare may your kingdom come. May your will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. Honor to your name. Glory to your name. Praise to your name. Adoration, Lamb of God. We celebrate you. Thank you for the life of my brethren. Those who have joined us. Those who have connected, oh God. Thank you for my dear sister and brother. Thank you for brother Jonathan that's joined us this morning. Thank you, Lord, for sister Kumisa, sister Tina, and so many. Lord, we want to use this time to pray for brother Derek and his wife, sister Diony, once again. As your church, we lift them up and we proclaim and declare, Satan, you have no hold over their life, over their family. We lift them up. We proclaim healing in the name of Jesus upon their entire household. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for your deliverance. We thank you for your restoring power. In the name of Jesus, we proclaim healing, deliverance upon their household. We declare in the name of Jesus, transformation in the name of Jesus into the life right now of the September's family. We proclaim upon 6 Park Street. That's the number of their, the address of their house, 6 Park Street. We pray for 6 Park Street. Franjuk, in the name of Jesus, we pray for everyone, yes, every inhabitant of that realm. We declare right now, every spirit in the name of Jesus, contrary to the will of God, we banish you. We decree and we declare right now that the healing power of God flow into that space we come against, we approve spirit of corona, we come against every ungodliness, every satanic yes, people have gone through this We have, uh, and they have overcome, they will overcome this in Jesus name, thank you father, we thank you, we honor you, we glorify you for your healing virtue, we bless you for your healing hand, thank you Lord for your healing spirit right now, we thank you Lord for the lungs of my brothers and my sister right now, yes, heal perfected, yes Lord, their kidney their system heal, every part of their being from the crown of their head to the soul of their feet. We declare healing virtue, the virtue of God. We send forth your word, your word. Heal them and deliver them. And to as many out there, oh God, in Eastern Cape, Western Cape, South Africa, wherever, Lord, the people, our friends and brothers are suffering, men of God suffering from this spirit. We banish it in Jesus' name. We declare our victory is in Christ Jesus. Father, we thank you. We honor you this morning once again. Lord, thank you, O God. Oh, hallelujah. The more you want to stop, the more you just remember to pray. And yes, this is how we do it. Father, we thank you this morning. Yes, this is service, friends. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for breakthrough. Thank you for opening of doors. Yes, I just feel an anointing to just pray for those in the marketplace, Lord. I thank you, Spirit of God, for openings of doors. Thank you, Father, for creativity. Yes, in the world of medicine, the name of Jesus, creativity in the world of medicine. Medicine is a big business. Yes, and there are certain people that have positioned themselves, but right now we dislodge them and we pray, oh God, that the right people will begin to find, yes, Lord, uh, yes, a footing into, yes, Lord, this business in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, that we will put, that they will put, yes, the love of men at heart, not the love of money.
in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for people that you're bringing into, yes, the field, oh God, yes, Lord, of, 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 of programming, yes, in the name of Jesus. Uh, things that will allow, that will help, oh God, yes, people across the earth to be, to be, to be, to be, to be resourced, to be empowered in Jesus' name. We thank you right now for the great things that you're doing. We receive breakthrough, breakthrough, clarity, understanding, impartation, revelation in Jesus' name. Wisdom builds you, grace given to you, understanding, boldness, capacity in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Honor and glory be unto you. Thank you, Father, for the openings of doors. Thank you, Father, for this walk, the potter's gate. Thank you, Lord, that, Lord, this ministry will continue, yes, in the path that you have ordained it. We will not, inc we will not decrease, but we will continue to increase. We will continue to grow, multiply. Thank you. Send men to resource us. Send men, oh God, to be a blessing to us so that your work will continue to advance. Thank you, Spirit of God, for what you're doing this morning. Breakthrough in Jesus' name. Breakthrough in Jesus' name. Breakthrough in Jesus' name. For this ministry, grace, send help. For vain is the help of men, O oh God. Our eyes are in you. Our help is in your name, Jesus. I thank you, Father, to as many that will be listening, O oh God, to this broadcast today. Wherever they will be listening from, I pray in Jesus' name that you will touch them as the word comes via the airwave lord as the as the word is there hit their eardrum lord something will begin to yes walk in their life that speaks to their yes alignment yes reform transformation deliverance in jesus name lord i thank you for this word is power packed this word is full of authority to deliver to set free but master to give sight to oh god to those that are spiritually blind we thank you we honor you, God, once again this morning for answering our prayer. Oh, hallelujah. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. Oh, glory. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Thank you so very much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, uh, my dear sister. Thank you for all those words. I'm going to read all your comments later on. All right. Thank you once again, uh, Brother Jonathan Nigel. Thank you. Thank you for what God has done this morning. We bless the Lord. Amen. Bless the Lord. Thank you. I want to thank God for our, our apostle. Amen. Apostle uh, Godfrey. Amen. Lonats. We pray for him. We pray for his ministry. We pray for that great man of God. We pray. Amen. For the new dawn ministry. Grace. 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 Grace in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Newness in the name of Jesus. Breakthrough in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. We thank you, Father, for your servant. Uh, we bless, oh God, yes, your name for his life, for the things that you're doing in his life. Thank you, Father, for such a man, oh God, of humility, yet a man that you have resourced with boldness, with understanding, with wisdom. We pray for him, oh God. We pray for his home and his family, his ministry. May he continue, oh God, to walk into the path of this new day. Thank you, Lord, that you will continue to perfect your walk in his life. Thank you for a new scepter of authority that you're giving to him, Lord. Uh, yes, to continue to advance your will and counsel to the glory of your holy name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Thank you so much everyone. We bless the Lord. We'll see you again hopefully tomorrow if the Lord permits us or maybe even later today. I don't know but as the Spirit leads us, we want to follow the guidance and the leading of the Spirit. I believe when we do that, we'll become even more productive. So thank you so very much, everyone, for joining me this morning. Have yourself a wonderful Sunday morning. Amen. Keep rejoicing in the Lord. God bless you. Bye-bye.